but there's a lot of space. See how they roll around in there? <laughs> you do not want that when you're shipping your bath bomb. It's magical when you are close, you can close it, babe. What do you got? Cause I am gold, I'm golden. Hey everyone, today I have a really special video for you guys. I will be showing you how I pack my Etsy orders. I have a few bath bomb orders that came through, so I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to show you guys how I give my bath bombs the best possible chance to arrive to my customers all in one piece. So you thought the hardest thing about bath bombs is making them? Try shipping them. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson back in May when we were shipping hundreds of bath bombs out. Yeah, there's a right and wrong way to ship bath bombs. Unfortunately, we found out that, but especially for carriers in the States, that they don't necessarily treat your packages with the greatest of care. A lot of our bath bombs arrived pretty messed up. <laughs> a lot of it was the carrier. We stopped using a very specific one because we realized that they did not take care of our packages properly but another portion of that was definitely us and how we were packing those bath bombs. We learned two important things when it comes to packing bath bombs for shipment. One, you wanna make sure that there is no space inside of your box, absolutely none. And a good way to find that out is you close up your package and you shake it. If you hear any type of rattle, any at all, open that up and stuff more stuff into it. There will be so many things that could possibly happen to that box. If you have a bath bomb that's rattling around, damage will be done to that bath bomb. The second thing that you want to avoid is moisture getting into your bath bomb. Bath bombs, when they're exposed to any type of moisture, will do what bath bombs do best, and that's activate. <laughs> The ingredients in a bath bomb react to moisture. That's what makes them fizz and bubble up in a bathtub. So when you have a bath bomb in a very humid climate, it will do weird things to that bath bomb. It will actually compromise the hardness of it. It will start to become soft, which makes it more prone to crumbling. And if you have a crumbly bath bomb in a box that's been rattling around, disaster happens. And here are my two orders for the day. They are both bath bomb orders. I have a listing on my Etsy where you can order three in one box. And I have their uh, labels already printed over here. So what I do with these bath bombs to help with the moisture issue is I initially wrap them in their biodegradable shrink wrap, which gives them the first layer of protection. The next thing I will do is wrap this band around the diameter of the bath bomb and then I will add another layer of shrink wrap on top. So I give them two barriers of protection. And since I've been doing that, my complaints about a crumbled and destroyed bath bomb have been none at all. So that method has been working really well for me. For those wondering, I print all of my labels on just regular white cardstock and I create all of them in Photoshop. I think my favorite bath bomb is my watermelon one. It's just so cute and it smells so good. <laughs> Pink Fairy Mimosa is a close second though. So after I have all of their paper labels wrapped around them, oops, that one sprung open. I'm going to have to re-glue that, but now that they have all of their labels on, I'm gonna go take them over to the shrink wrapping station and give them their second layer of shrink wrap around the outside.
Now I'm gonna take this heat gun and I'm going to shrink wrap these guys. So now that all of those bath bombs are double wrapped and sealed, we're going to take care of the cushion issue. These boxes I got from Staples and they're amazing for shipping because they're really strong, they're really sturdy, um, and they also fit these bath bombs pretty nicely. But there's a lot of space. See how they roll around in there? <laughs> You do not want that when you're shipping your bath bomb. So one of the things that I do to prevent that from them rolling around is I use this recyclable paper crinkle fill and I just stuff it in here and I fill in all of the nooks and crannies and I just uh, keep packing it in until they don't roll around anymore. <laughs> And as you can see here, I've packed the frill to go in between the sides of the box and the bath bomb, but also in between each bath bomb. Because if you have them knocking against each other, they might start breaking each other apart. So you wanna kinda create a, a cushion that completely surrounds it, kinda like a nest. Think of these bath bombs as precious eggs that you're trying to protect from harm. And a good way to know that they're in there really good is just shake them from side to side. And if they're not moving, you're good to go. So we've taken care of protecting them and giving them the best possible chance of getting to the buyer all in one piece. Now we're going to do the final touches, which is branding and a card if they've requested it. So I'll show you how I do that. For all that stuff, I just use regular cardstock. Just plain white cardstock. And this is also the same paper that I use for the bands that go around the bath bomb. So I just print my cards on here using my laser jet printer. So these cards are a way to let the buyer know a little bit more about your product and your company. And it's an awesome way to add that little extra touch when you're packing your orders. And I just think it looks really, really, really cute. And then I also add um, a thank you card to let them know that we appreciate their order. And there's a little bit of a discount on there as well. And there's a bit of a call to action to review our product on Etsy. And that seems to be really helpful in getting people to review your stuff. And I'm also going to add a sticker that will go up on here. So all of these things are a way to let your customer know a little bit more about your brand. And if this is a gift, it really gives the person that they're gifting the stuff to a really awesome impression of your company and maybe they'll want to go and buy something um, for their friend at a later time or for themselves too. So you can see how there's still quite a bit of space between here and the top of the box. So we're gonna add an extra layer of cushion by adding these 
pieces of paper at the very top. And if you saw my soap haul video, you'll recognize these pieces of paper as um, the paper that the company, the soap supplier company, packed my order in. And I'm just reusing it for my own orders. So there you can see how it fills up the rest of the space and gives our bath bombs that extra layer of protection. Another thing to leave a really good impression on your customer, on the backs of my thank you cards, I write a little handwritten note telling them how thankful I am for their order. And I give them also a little sample. And these are just one ounce size soaps that I like to add with my order. So I have the shipping labels printed and ready to be taped down. I mostly use Canada Post to ship my packages and because I've been shipping a lot this year, we have a pretty good discount. There's different tiers um, on Canada Post for small businesses. So if you're a small business and are wanting to get a little bit of a discount on your shipments, I highly re recommend um, Snapship by Canada Post. They've been really good for us. So there you have it. That is how I package my bath bombs for shipment. I hope you like this type of video. Please give a thumbs up if you did. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and turn those notifications on for more videos. I try my best to post daily. For those already subscribed, thank you so much, all 590 of you. Wow, that number just keeps getting higher and higher. Thank you so much for following me on my journey. And I hope all of you continue to stay awesome. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.